Hi, I'm Dick Scott with RCSP. I'm starting a new video post today titled Photography Gadgets and this is episode number one. I wanted to make some short informative videos about products I use and would recommend to other photographers. It's not going to always be about cameras or lenses or expensive equipment. Sometimes it will just be about cool gadgets. Today, for example, I'm going to talk about a fairly inexpensive gadget for your camera strap. Have you ever wanted to remove your camera strap when your camera was on a tripod but didn't because it is such a hassle to get off and then get back on again? So you just put up with it dangling from your camera and getting in the way? I certainly have, but I solved this problem with a product from Peak Design. They're called Anchor Links. Here's what you get in the box. They're composed of two pieces, the piece that goes on your camera strap and the piece that goes on your camera. You actually get four of the pieces that go on the camera. What you do is take your camera strap off of your camera and put it on the piece made for your strap. It goes on exactly like it did when you put the strap on the camera. Here's how to put it on. Okay, let me show you how this goes on. You have basically four pieces. You have the camera strap, you have the anchor link, you have basically the little buckle that came off of your strap that came with your camera strap, and then you have this little retainer. This retainer can go on first and it ends up holding the tail down or you can put it on after you put the buckle on and it can end up pushing up against this to kind of keep this tight here so you don't have a loop in this very big. It's kind of a preference thing. It's kind of like your choice. I prefer to use it to pull the tail down. So you get the end of the strap, make sure you don't get anything twisted. You just put this through the strap and you can just really just kind of pull this way down and out of the way. Then you take your buckle, making sure you keep that strap untwisted. You go through here. Then you come back and you go through here. This is the same way you put it on your camera. And you can just pull a little slack into that. And then you're gonna to wanna to put some slack into here. So you just basically come out and pull this out so you can get enough slack in there. And I pull usually more than I need. Then you take this, making sure to keep it untwisted. And you take it and you just go down through this. And it ends up being like this. Then you're gonna to wanna to take the tail and go back up underneath the other strap. So it basically comes up inside this loop. So you take that, you turn it around, and you go back to the other side. Again, like I said, just exactly the same way it came on your camera or you put it on your camera. The instructions for that are in the are also obviously in there with the, the anchor link, but they're also in your camera manual too. And you can just kind of pull this. You don't want to get too much of a tail there, so you can just pull that. And when you get that where you want it, you just pull it out. So you end up with it looking like this. And then all you need to do is just pull this down, which is the retainer. And I just usually just end up putting it over the tail so that it kind of holds the tail down. So when it's all said and done, you end up with it looking like that. And now that takes care of putting the anchor link itself onto the camera strap. Okay, now you got the one piece on. You now have this piece on for the camera that actually goes to the strap. Now you have this piece which actually fastens to the camera. You just want a GH5, which is what this is. You just put it through this loop here, like that. And then you just bring this over and you just really just feed this right back through it again, like that. And then you just get it straightened up and you pull it tight. Now that you've got the, the camera piece on, all you need to do is bring the strap over here, put this where you actually took it out, and just push down and it goes in. And again, if you want to bring it out, just press it down with one finger, and your thumb, and it goes right back out again. Same thing, if you want to bring it back in, bring it in here, and you can push it back on with one hand. They're also handy for attaching your camera to the ring on a backpack strap. However, you have to learn to take it on and off with one hand because the other hand is holding your camera. But as you've seen, it's quite simple. I'm trying to find the right strap so I can use one for a safety leash to make sure my camera doesn't come off the head and crash to the ground. I carry my camera and lens attached to the head and just throw the tripod, head, camera, and lens over my shoulder as I move from place to place while I'm out shooting. I'm always afraid the camera may come loose and fall even though it is very unlikely using a Swiss Arca head because of the safety features built into the plate. Even if the head loosens a little, the plate has screws on the bottom at each end that keep it from sliding out of the head. If you have a long plate, it may scare you half to death when it slides from one end to the other, but it should stay attached to the head, unless it had loosened a lot, which is not very likely to happen. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short episode and please tune in for my next one. If you liked it, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of them, please hit the subscribe button, which helps me with YouTube. 
If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me through YouTube or send an email to dscott at rcscottphotography.com. My website is www.rcscottphotography.com. Check it out if you want to see some of my pictures. I also sell the RCSP7 flash bracket on my website. I'll put a link to Peak Design's website in the description below and also a couple of links on where to purchase them. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. I'm trying to monetize this channel and I need a thousand subscribers to do so. I almost was there and almost monetized at the end of last year, but because I didn't get around to it, the first of the year rolled around and my procrastination got me. <laughs> so now, as of now, you have to have a thousand subscribers to monetize your channel and I have about 850. So any help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching and have a great day.